Kathy Griffin got canned by CNN this afternoon, a day after she posted a picture of herself posing ISIS style with Donald Trump's bloody severed head. The image itself was appalling, violent, creepy, weird. But it was also, and this may be the main problem, totally unfunny. Kathy Griffin bills herself as a comedian, but this was not comedy. It was a political stunt of the dumbest kind. Your eighth grader wouldn't do it. It was too stupid. And yet it wasn't a departure for Griffin. She hasn't been funny in years, assuming she ever was. People clap for her not because they're amused, but because they agree with her politics. That's not art. It's affirmation. But an awful lot of comedy is like that all of a sudden. Ever watch Samantha B? If you like preachy self-righteousness in massive doses, that's the show for you. Or try John Oliver, you get the same thing there. Or Bill Maher, or Trevor Noah, or Stephen Colbert. Some of these guys used to be funny a long time ago. They're not Samantha Bee. She was never funny. Now they're just playing to the biases and the vanities of their audience. And it's working, unfortunately, which means they're all exactly the same. Prisoners of conformity, which is always the sworn enemy of art. Step out of line and you pay the price. As Dave Chappelle, who is a genius, learned when he returned from retirement not long ago and dared to gore a sacred cow or two. That used to be what comedians did, and we were grateful to hear someone tell the truth. Now they're booed off the stage for even daring to do that. Humor is dead. Politics killed it. Ben Kissel is a comedian. He joins us to mourn. <laughs> now, Ben, I know we're not on the same side politically. I doubt any comedian agrees with my politics, but I think you'll agree that Kathy, Kathy Griffin is just not funny. And like, no, I know a lot of people who work in comedy. I don't know one person who thinks Kathy, Kathy Griffin is talented. She's not, and yet she's hung on all these years because she's a political activist, and that's enough, and it shouldn't be enough. Yeah, I mean, I am not the core demographic uh, for Kathy Griffin. Her fan base enjoys her, and, and there's something to be said about that. I think there might be a bit of a misnomer because she is a comedian. It doesn't necessarily mean, however, that all of her actions, all of her uh, moments of satire are meant uh, to solicit laughter. I think she was <laughs> attempting to make a political point that obviously uh, has angered a lot on the right, and certainly even some on the left, but I think we do have to address the issue of political political correctness uh, and how it has gone completely bonkers in this country and the right for the longest time called the left snowflakes but uh, where I'm sitting it's cold in here and the snow is falling not from the left but from the right well let me just be totally clear I'm never gonna call for anybody's firing for saying something stupid on television as someone who said stupid things on television I'm against the mob forcing anyone from a job and it right. happens all the time and I'm not into it but let's just be totally real about Kathy Griffin she's totally mediocre like, it's not when you say, when you say, well, just because she's a comedian doesn't mean she has to be funny. If you say you're a surgeon, you've got to be able to take my appendix out or you're not really a surgeon. Well, there should be a bar for like being funny and she doesn't meet it. You know, I'm not going to go into if she's funny or not. It's a very subjective thing. I do just want to focus on her First Amendment rights to, uh, uh, you know, for this satire. It should exist or she has the First Amendment right uh, to do so the same way that Ted Nugent had a First Amendment right uh, to shoot an effigy of Barack Obama in 2012. The same way that that rodeo clown who was fired from the rodeo uh, for putting on a Barack Obama mask had the right to uh, his okay, but, but uh, own form of satire as well. The First Amendment, which I support vehemently, doesn't mean anything if you can't exercise it. And comedians feel that they have to toe a certain line, and you know because you're in this business. They are not free to deviate from the received wisdom on anything. Informity, conformity is enforced. Well, and that is, you can't create art in that environment. I'm not exactly sure if that's true. I mean, obviously, Kathy Griffin has learned when you do put yourself out there, uh, there will be a blowback. And again, that is well within the individual's rights to have the blowback of her actions. Uh, of course, she can also uh, uh, do, do those actions. I mean, I think we have to look at it as a whole. You know, the right for the longest time has been demonized and left for being politically correct. This is an opportunity for the right to stand up and say, hey, you know what? I'm not for this. I think this is abhorrent, but she has a right to do it. Well, but I mean, nobody, Ted Nugent, for crying out loud, I know. Okay, hold on. Nobody, I'm trying to talk to you about art, though, which is more meaningful, I think, than politics because it pertains to human expression and what sure. people really care about and what they really believe. I'll give you an example, and it is political, but it's, it's the perfect example. The kid who gave the speech or the supposed comedy deal at the White House Correspondents' Dinner was, like, totally mediocre, and he was there because he hates Trump. Here's a clip from him. Watch this. Donald Trump doesn't care about free speech. The man who tweets everything that enters his head refuses to acknowledge the amendment that allows him to do it. Think about it. It's, a, it's almost, what is it, 11? It's 11 p.m. right now. In four hours, Donald Trump will be tweeting 
about how bad Nicki Minaj bombed at this dinner. <laughs> and he'll be doing it completely sober. <laughs> and that's his right. And I'm proud that all of us are here tonight to defend that right, even if the man in the White House never would. Oh, God. Stop with the preaching. Does anybody what? ever stop with the preaching? I mean, seriously. I could go for less preaching. There is no denying that. Uh, but just again, uh, just, to, just to hammer home the point, uh, it was her right. Uh, Ted Nugent was just recently in the yeah, Oval Ted Office Nugent, with Donald Trump. Whatever. And Donald Trump did. But, uh, he is fortunate because this has been a distraction. But I want uh, someone to tell the truth, don't you? So when Dave Chappelle, everyone acknowledges Dave Chappelle is a really talented guy, and he comes back, and he doesn't know the rules have changed, and he tells jokes about transgenders or whatever. And all of a sudden, he's like attacked by everyone because that's not allowed. Some things are off limits. How can comedians allow anything to be off limits? I thought that was the whole point. You were brave enough to tell the whole truth, but you're not. You're cowards. I completely agree with you. Comedians should be able to, uh, to push the envelope, cross the line. That's exactly what Kathy Griffin did here. It's cost her monetarily. She lost uh, Squatty Potty and uh, the CNN. She didn't uh, cross New the York, line. Uh, she New was York playing Eve, for her friends, New Year's all Eve event. sanctimonious friends. It was like the nine people in her world were like, go, Kathy, that's so brave. But it's not, it doesn't tell a deeper truth about anything. It's like crap. Well, this again is, a, this, is an this is an opportunity for the right to stand up for the First Amendment. Yeah, and well, I'll don't be, doing be politically every night correct on this show. and allow people to do this, and you're allowed to protest uh, Kathy Griffin all you want. I'm sorry, Ben, that they got you captive over there. Great to see you tonight. Thank you, Tucker.